Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Gloria Victus. My name is Mr. Feudal, and I will be your guide through this introductory video to Gloria Victus. So let's begin at the very start. First, create a new character. Now, select your gender, your nation, and your origin. On your screen, you will have your nations as Midland, Sangmar, or Izmir. Choose one of the three and click Next. Once you're happy with the selection of your nation, now it's time to customize your character. Choose the randomize button if you don't feel like customizing your character or if you really want to go into detail, go down and edit all of the options available to you. As soon as you're happy with your selections, click next. Once you're happy with the way that your character looks, it's time to answer some questions. These questions are auto-generated by Gloria Victus to best choose the class suited to you. Answer honestly. At the end of all of these questions, you'll be presented with your class type, but don't worry, you can change it after answering these questions. Once you have answered all of the questions, Gloria Victus will assign you a class. If you're happy with this class, you can give your character a name, or you can click the dice button to give your character a random name. Remember to stay within the parameters of the red text. If you are not happy with the class selected, you can click Change Archetype. Changing Archetype will allow you to select from the other five archetypes available Scout, Guardsman, Tailor, Armorsmith, and Weaponsmith. Notice that the Strength, Constitution, and dexterity change as you select different classes, as well as your primary crafting professions and your secondary. Don't worry, you can change these easily by clicking the arrows to the left and right and assigning new values to your strength, constitution, dexterity, primary professions and secondary professions. Once you're happy with all of your selections, click Create Character. You have now created your first character in Gloria Victus. To enter the game, simply press Play. Welcome to your nation's capital. If you chose Midland, like I did, you will end up in Dunfin, pictured on screen. If you chose Izmir, you will land in Merrily. If you chose Sangmar, you will end up in Balhaman. Each faction has its own capital city, and these are key cities to new players, as they hold quests, markets and vendors, as well as your depot and guild recruitment boards. But first, let us go into some basic keybinds that you should know early game. The first key we will learn about is the Alt key. Holding the Alt key down will toggle your mouse. This will allow you to select things on your user interface as well as characters and players on screen. The next key is your E key. This is your interaction key. Use this to interact with players, NPCs and containers in the world. The next key is your I key. This will open your inventory. This will allow you to see your equipable items, your inventory slots, your attribute points and your character statistics. As you level up, you will assign new attribute points which will directly affect your character statistics. Pressing B on your keyboard will open your passive abilities. As you level up, you will gain passive ability points. 
Placing points into the appropriate abilities will determine how your character functions in a PvP or PvE instance. Pressing G on your keyboard will open your guild tab. As a new player you can create a new guild, you can have invitations or you can apply to a new guild. To apply to a new guild, approach a guild recruitment board and press E. Here you can see a whole list of different guilds that are currently recruiting new players. By clicking into these and clicking join guild, you can apply to a guild or directly join a guild. Next we will learn about the N key. This will toggle your first person and third person views. Next is the V key. Holding V down will toggle the emotes. These are surprisingly useful, especially when taunting the enemy players. Next, we will learn about the O key. The O key will open up your skins. Your skins can be applied via this window. To obtain skins, do quests in the open world of Gloria Victus or access the game shop and purchase them through that. To access the game store, press K on your keyboard. Here you can buy ambers which are used to buy items, skins and heraldry symbols. To keep on top of your quests, press L. This will open up a list format of quests that you currently have. You can check detailed information as well as where the next quest is on the map. As you can see, my next quest is currently located behind me. Next, pressing M on your keyboard will open up your map. Using your scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out of the map. Midland is associated with red flags, Izmir with blue, and Sangmar with yellow. Using your left mouse button, you can drag the map around to the desired locations. Next, pressing F1 on your keyboard will open up the tutorial window. This shows all of the default keys, as well as some detailed information about the in-game world. Pressing F2 on your keyboard will open up the ranking window. Here you can see your profile with your kills, deaths and assists as well as other information. You can see your glory ranking against other players in game, your arena ranking against other players, your guild ranking if you belong to a guild, and weekly rankings which can involve events, locations that have been upgraded, mentor points, healing points and jewels and much more. Finally, my favourite keybind, the F key. This will toggle your combat mode where you will draw your weapons out. Pressing F again will shoot your weapons. If you aren't happy with the way that the keys are set up, you can change these freely. Pressing escape on your keyboard, selecting options and selecting the fourth option on the left will open up the keybinds. You can change these freely and remember to click apply when you're finished editing. Next we will look at your user interface. At the top right of your screen you will see a mini map surrounded by a few buttons. Clicking the arena button and registering for arena will place you in a 1 vs 1 fight to the death arena match with a player from your own nation or from enemy nations. Once you've loaded into the arena, you're free to use any type of weapon, including bows, to kill your opponent. This is the objective. Kill your opponent and gain arena points.
Having defeated my opponent, I have managed to obtain myself some arena points. If you don't want to fight and simply observe, click the Observe Jewels in the Arena button. The next button is the Skull Icon, or the Traitor button, or Friendly Fire Toggle button. Remember, toggling this will affect your reputation if you damage friendly players. Clicking the Upcoming Events button will show you the regular and open world events. Events such as Valley of Death Tournament are an ideal way for new players to experience large number battles against each nation. Selecting Open World will show you the open world events that you can take part in freely, but be careful! Most, if not all of these, have PvP enabled, which means rival nations can interrupt you. Next button is the Free Arena button. This will transport you to an arena map where you can face off with other people, train up your skills and also take part in PvP events. Once you've loaded in, you will appear at a campsite. Simply run up this hill. Once you have reached the top, you have reached the open arena. Now, it is key to note that on the exterior of this area is a safe zone. As you walk in, it is no longer a safe zone. Demonstrated on screen, you will see the dove icon flash on and off as you enter and exit the arena. As you play in the arena, upon death, you will respawn back at the camp. And don't worry, you will not be looted here. If you've had enough of the arena and want to go back to the main part of the map, simply clicking on the globe icon and waiting for the timer to run, you will respawn back in your nation's capital. Now that you've arrived back inside your nation's capital, it's time to go over the last buttons on the minimap. These are the plus and minus icons. These are to zoom in and zoom out of your minimap. The next part of your user interface is your chat windows. On the bottom right of my screen is a system log. This tells me what happens to my character and what my character does in game. For example, receiving or giving items, dealing or receiving damage. On the left hand side of my screen is another chat window. This allows me to chat to players on my nation, the help channel, the English channel, alliance, guild, party and say. But you don't have to use your cursor to toggle this. Pressing enter and using the tab button on your keyboard will toggle the different chat rooms. Next are your buffs and debuffs. Located at the top left or in my case at the bottom right, you can toggle your mouse using the alt key and hovering over each individual icon to see what it does. Next, if you've forgotten your keybinds, don't worry, clicking this cog on the bottom right will allow you to see all the available windows that you can open. They can also show you all of the available keybinds that you've set for these windows. Next is your hotbar. You can assign different items to your hotbar to allow yourself quick access to tools, weapons, food and even armour. Clicking 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5 on my keyboard will toggle out these items for me to use. Next, this red bar located right here is your health. Don't let this reach zero or your character will die. Next, this light blue bar below your hotbar is your XP pool. This tells you what level you're currently at and how much XP that you need to advance to the next level. Next is your stamina bar. On screen, you will see a yellow bar right next to your health pool. This is your stamina bar. Don't let this reach zero or you will no longer be able to sprint or do heavy attacks with your weapons. Last is the notification center. Located at the bottom right of your screen, you can accept guild invites, party invites, friend requests, and you can also accept rewards for logging into your character on a daily basis. Gloria Victus offers a resource rich world for you to explore and gather in, but it's important to note that you need to use the correct tools when you're gathering items. For example, I'm gathering limonite right here with a sword. That's not correct. This is a stone based resource. I need a pickaxe. 
As you can see, it decreases the amount of time needed for me to gather this Luminite. Once you gather the Luminite, it will disappear on screen. It will end up inside your inventory. If you press I, you will also gain experience. Now, as we said before, gathering Pinewood with a pickaxe is not efficient. Using a hatchet is much more efficient. It cuts down the time and it speeds up the process. Some resources in the world of Glory Victus don't require a tool for you to collect them. Pressing E on a bee's hive will allow you to collect beeswax and honey. You will notice in the world of Glory Victus that it has a variety of different types of animals. You can actually kill these animals and take their hides. You can use them in crafting, for making food, for making leather and making all sorts of different items. As mentioned before, with these herbs, we don't need a tool, we can simply just gather them. These eggs on the floor don't require a tool, we can just click E and pick them up. The exact same goes for these mushrooms right here. As you play and learn in Gloria Victus, you'll soon understand what tools you need to collect different types of resources. For example, a hatchet for wood, a pickaxe for stone items, a sickle for farmable goods, and a shovel for things like clay. As well as a rich resource world, we also have a rich crafting menu. Here, we can press C on our keyboard to open our crafting menu. Here, we can also toggle our professions. Now, you'll notice that professions have a number located on the left and the right of them. This is your skill level in each individual's profession. As you craft items in one profession, you will level up in that profession. You'll become more proficient at creating items for, for example, armor smithing, weapon smithing, and tailoring, as well as forestry, cooking, and artificing. As a new player, you'll enter the game with a whole bunch of different types of recipes for each individual profession. But don't worry, you can expand on these by accessing vendors, the marketplace, as well as killing NPCs in the world and learning different types of recipes. To demonstrate the crafting, we're going to make one roasted venison. First, let's butcher the fox that we killed out in the open world. This will generate thin leather and one venison. Next, we need a fuel type, so we're going to use wooden billets. Selecting the arrows to the left and right will increase and decrease the amount. Using the double icon on the right and left will increment it by five. So let's create five lots of wooden billets. Now we are going to go to cooking and select roasted venison. We have enough to create one, click create and we have now got one piece of edible food. I'm going to attach that to my hotbar and press zero. This will now satisfy my hunger. The crafting window is a great way to create items quick and cheap, but you'll notice in cities and towns that there will be these items on screen. These are crafting stations. Using crafting stations can actually benefit you in the long term as they will create improved gear, they will provide a higher yield, as well as more experience. Interacting with a workstation will open its profession and turn it green. This means you will get a higher yield and potentially more experience. Here we can actually create an iron knife with the possibility of a better quality. Let's create one. Now that we've created it, press I, we open up our inventory and there it is, our iron knife. And you'll notice that it has a plus three beside its name. Because we used a workstation, 
we have a better quality knife than the one that we entered the game with. It is best to use workstations when you can. Now to fighting. Gloria Victus offers a skill based directional combat system where pitching your mouse forward, back, left or right will decide the direction that you attack in. Left mouse clicking will toggle the animation to attack. Simply clicking left mouse button will deal very little damage. However, if you click and hold left mouse button until the bar glows red, you will deal a heavy attack, thus dealing more damage. To defend yourself from these attacks, simply move your mouse cursor to the left, right, up or down. What you want to do is you want to match the direction of your opponent's swing and right mouse clicking to block the attack. If you're not happy with blocking with a two-handed weapon, you can use a shield. A shield has a 180 degree protective bubble in front of the player, which means all you have to do is right mouse click and hold. Holding will allow you to block any incoming damage. Here we demonstrate heavy charged attacks. Here we demonstrate light attacks and how little damage they do. In Gloria Victus there is a backstab component, whereby if you attack the backside of a character or enemy player you will deal additional damage. Here we demonstrate two-handed blocking or parrying. My opponent is matching my attack direction and blocking with his two-handed weapon. As we mentioned, using a shield and blocking hard with it will allow a 180 degree bubble in front of your character. Here we can see my character attacking my opponent and trying to deal damage. I cannot deal any damage because my opponent is hard blocking with his shield. There is one downside to hard blocking with your shield. If a player presses Q, they'll kick. If they kick your shield, they'll stagger you. As demonstrated on screen, the enemy opponent has been staggered as soon as I kick their shield away. They are hard blocking with their shield here. This is a big enough window where if I kick it, I can generate an attack and deal frontal damage to the enemy player. Here is an example of what not to do when using a shield. Due to hard blocking constantly, my enemy opponent has managed to beat me by kicking my shield away and causing a stagger. Next we will see the usage of charged attacks and blocking or parrying using two handed weapons.
if you'd rather shoot your enemies from range, you can use bows. Left mouse clicking and charging your shot will allow for a heavy attack, the same way your heavy attack works with a melee weapon. Left clicking will simply generate a very weak arrow volley. You can also hold right mouse button and go into a first person view. This allows for more accuracy and more leading. Now, let's talk about some of the benefits your capital city will have for you. First of all, let's talk about the depot. Your depot is your own personal bank, which you can deposit things such as money and items into this. What you want to do is find the green depot icon on your minimap. Approach this and press E. Your depot will look a little like this, a chest. Pressing E on it and opening up the depot window will show you all of the available slots that you can fill. As a new player, you will only have the first bag unlocked. All other bag slots will be locked, but don't worry, you can unlock these using in-game money. Now, let's add some items to the depot. Double clicking on the items in your inventory will automatically add them to your depot. You can also withdraw items by double clicking on them or right clicking on them. Here I've taken my 200 axe, placed it into my inventory and attached it to my hotbar. Not only can you add items, but you can also add money. We have one iron crown, so let's deposit one iron crown into our depot bank. We have now saved ourselves one iron crown into the depot. As a new player, you'll enter the game with a lot of different crafting recipes, but there is a whole host of different ones accessible via the vendors. This vendor here, which is known as the Weaponsmith, will sell us different recipes in order to create different types of weapons, as well as different classes of weapons, for example, clan weapons, mana arm weapons, deserter weapons, and much more. But if you don't feel like crafting any weapons, you can buy weapons directly from the weaponsmith, armour from the leather, tailor and armorsmith, and food from the innkeeper and food and herb merchants. All of these vendors will be found in your capital city but they'll also be found in small villages and other captured settlements. If you find yourself short of food and you're starting to get a little bit hungry, you can access the innkeeper. The innkeeper will only sell food and drink. This will allow you to satisfy your hunger, the green stomach icon next to your hotbar. Now, let's talk a bit about travelling. Travelling in this game is all on foot, but don't worry, each nation's capital has a fast travel location. Identified as the horse icon on your minimap, accessing this vendor will allow you to travel to nation-owned locations on the map. Here we can travel to Greenport, Waterford and Dundrum Fort. You cannot travel to enemy-owned settlements. For example, Izmir's in the north have captured Abbey, Rodrock and Blackrock. We cannot travel there via fast travel, as well as Locations on the mainland near your capital, you cannot fast travel to small villages near your capital. However, we can travel to any location that's currently being marked with a white outline. Next, let's talk to the mercenary recruiter. 
the mercenary recruiter is technically a nation change vendor. Access this vendor if you're not happy with your current nation or if you want to go and support an underdog nation you can do that as well. If you feel the vendor's prices are a little bit too high, don't worry, you can access the player marketplace. Every nation has a player marketplace where you can sell directly to your nation and buy from your nation. Accessing the player marketplace, I can see that I have some finished products. I've managed to sell something for one silver. Go to the buy tab and we can now purchase a different item. Each tab consists of different items. Using the arrows on the bottom, you can cycle through the pages of different items on sale by different players. We can also sell some items, so let's sell our iron knife that we crafted. Let's sell it for one silver and list it for 30 days. This will incur a small fee, but don't worry, we have enough money to cover it. Clicking add will add it to the marketplace. We have now added our iron knife to the marketplace. Clicking the My Offers tab will allow you to see the amount of offers you have. As a current player, I currently have a lot of items on sale. As you can see, they can range from recipes, to swords, to tools, to raw materials. If you feel you don't want to sell any of these items, clicking Cancel and Taking Items will allow you to take back the item you had for sale. The marketplace is a great way to get rid of excess items as well as selling high value items for a reasonable price and gaining some money in game. If you're feeling lucky, approach the dice icon on your minimap and you can play a game of dice. You can play against the player or the innkeeper. Playing against the player, you can set your own price where the other player has to match it in order to play you. Or you can play the innkeeper to get a little bit of experience. And that just about covers it. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been Mr Feudal. I hope this tutorial has helped you and I hope to see you on the battlefield. And don't worry, my player on screen has turned into something more formidable.